Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Triangle BNI. My name is Mike Manning, and each week we bring you members of Triangle BNI that are successful business people in the community. They have great stories to tell about how they got started, how they use BNI to help grow their business, and we look forward to bringing you those stories each week. Uh, if you've never been to a BNI meeting, BNI stands for Business Networking International. It is the world's largest networking organization and their chapters all over the world and our little slice of heaven here in the triangle and if you're not from around here it's raleigh durham and chapel hill in the central part of north carolina it's called triangle bni there's about 40 chapters over 700 members steve hand is the executive director and plenty of things to do to help you start a business or grow your business and our guest with us today from liberty mutual insurance is brianna postaway brianna glad Hi, to have you here today thanks for having me so each week at BNI, there's a featured speaker, five minutes or 10 minutes, depending on the size of your chapter. And the way they introduce people is with the member bio sheet. So we're going to start with that for okay. you today. Okay. So you're in the, okay. So Brianna Postaway, you are with Liberty Mutual Insurance yes. in Raleigh. Yes. Okay. Years in the business. I have been with Liberty Mutual since June of last year. So a little over a year. All right. Glad to hear that. Previous types of jobs. Um, so I was a general manager for a franchise group. We had um, five different brands that we tried to promote. Nestle Toll House being one. Oh, haagen -Dazs. Yeah, haagen oh. Put those together, right? <laughs> um, haagen Annie Ann's. And um, my job was to hire, fire, train, um, promote, and, and sell. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what other types of jobs? Let's go back to high school. Those are some of the more fun stories to hear about. So that that was my first job, um, my first real job. I, I did a smoothie job where I just, you know, worked at <laughs> South Point slinging smoothies. And then I started working with haagen -Dazs. After about six months with the company, they realized my initiative and promoted me to assistant manager. Very nice. And then it was about a month that I did that before they were like, you can handle a whole store. And then it was... Maybe six months after that, I had three that I was right. working with. So, okay. yeah. This was in college or after college? This was in high school. High school, okay. Yeah, right. so 16, 17, um, freshman year of college, I realized I could not offer 55 hours a week <laughs> and still be a successful freshman. So I kind of bowed away um, from that position and served until um, I graduated. All right. Yeah. And you were, you were born and raised in Durham and you went to Peace College. I went to Meredith, Meredith College. College. Sorry, yes, okay. We talked I about did. that earlier. My bad. So. I went to Meredith. Okay. Uh, spouse? No. Okay. Kids? No. Okay. I have two sweet, adorable Here puppies, Here we go. Though. Now, yeah. Yes. I love, I love the no bud. Here are my kids. Yeah. <laughs> no, but my puppies are my children. So. Okay. What kind of dogs? I have an Akita Hound mix and a Brindle Pitbull, Hemi and Stella. Five right. and three. All right. How'd you come up with the names? Um, Hemi because I wanted a truck. <laughs> In college, and that was not going to happen, so I named him Hemi. Okay. And Stella, because she needed something not scary for a pit bull. <laughs> and okay. Stella seemed right. sweet enough. All right, so hobbies and activities of interest. Um, so I like to read. I like to shop online and add a bunch of things to my cart and purchase them never. And <laughs> I also like to do extreme couponing where I actually – a little bit purchased things. All right, so let's talk about that. How'd you get into that, and what's the secret to couponing? Uh, so I got into extreme couponing um, by, uh, I'm not sure. I struggled to do grocery shopping and not walking away with $300 for one person. I know it seems like a lot, but um, I wanted to find a way. I knew it could be possible. Mm -hmm. I knew that the TV shows were not all myth. So I tried. My first trip, I walked away with $120 worth of products that I spent $40 for. Wow. I left the store with my shopping cart running to my car. Like, is someone going to come get me? <laughs> like, did I break the law? Like, how is this possible? You know, I had, I had meat and, and vegetables and laundry detergent, which is, like, ridiculously priced. Mm -hmm. And, um... I just kept at it, and I got better and better. The secret is um, reading your store's coupon policy. A lot of stores will oh, okay. double your coupons, and other stores will accept competitor coupons. So it's just it's good to know the store's coupon policy and kind of what your rules are, what you're allowed to get away with. So while couponing is a noble endeavor, 
in line behind the person with all the coupons. I'm sure you've gotten some looks before. Yeah. Or people just kind of start tapping like, hey, I got, you know. Yeah. So I like to go through self-checkout. It's a little bit uh, okay. more painless. I can control it. I can watch, keep myself organized. Okay. So for both reasons. So I don't have someone behind me like tapping their foot. And yeah. also so that I can watch what I'm doing. Because it's a, it's a very... um detailed science like you have to pay attention if you miss something that could be like 10 15 dollars yeah. that you weren't expecting and no one wants to be the person at the end of giving all their coupons thinking their bill was like 20 and then it ends up being 60 and you're like where did i make make a mistake you <laughs> no, know I, so yeah i try to uh, catch it in the beginning your your city of residence i live in raleigh um How not long? too far from campus i moved um freshman the summer before my freshman year so i was 17 so, yeah, five, six years now I've been in Raleigh. Okay. All right. Your burning desire is to? My burning desire is just to make sure that the world is a little bit better educated. I find that people don't know um, what they need to know. And I have a strong resource, my BNI team, I'm just making sure that everyone that I come in contact with um, has the educational piece that they can get from my group. I have a lot of amazing people in our group. And Brianna's group is RDO9, Triangle's Best. They meet yeah. there. I believe you're the only chapter right now that meets on Mondays at really? 8.30. I think they're working on a second one, but uh, but okay. 8.30 a.m. at Family Legacy Solutions. Yes. So if you ever want to come down and catch a good Monday morning group, that would be the one. That is the one, the only one that you would <laughs> want to go to, yes. Your key to success? Um, just staying on top of things, you know, keeping myself organized. Um, it's really important to stay organized, especially when you have, you know, 300, 400 people that you're touching, talking to every week. Um, so I keep myself organized and ask for help when I need help. My favorite question out of all this, something in Grand there be some new people here haven't met you before. So something no one knows about you. Something no one knows about me is that I'm a go-getter and, well, I'm sure a lot of people know that, but no one knows that I only applied to Meredith College. <laughs> that, that was the school I was going to. There was no contingency plan. If I didn't get in, then I was going to show up Monday morning with my books ready for class. I sure was. <laughs> so dad and grandma were okay with this? Move? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Confidence, right? Good yes. GPA, yeah. SAT scores and all that. All right. Yeah. Glad it worked out for you. Yeah, same. So, all right. So you've been in the business not very long, which is always good. We like hearing B&I is a good mix of people that have been in there, uh, not only in B&I, but in their industry for a long time, but also new people. And it gives you an, an understanding of what you've learned in the amount of time you've been in B&I and how it's helped you grow your chapter. You have, have you, you've helped yourself grow your business in your chapter. So you've been in insurance about So a year. licensed and yes. selling less than a year. But okay. in insurance training and learning the industry over a year. Okay. So talk about your office, how it's set up, kind of where you are, State of the Union with you as an insurance agent are doing right now. Yeah. So so we're all captive agents. We um, we all have kind of our own book of business that we try to keep going and bring more business into. Um, each agent can qualify for additional additional assistance that the company will then pay for. Um, but you need the production to qualify for that. So that's kind of where I'm heading. Okay. Yeah. And how many people in your office? Um, well, there's two branches that are in my office. Okay. So on my side of the team, I think there's less than 10 or 11. Right. And on the other side, there's maybe 15, 18. Okay. Yeah. So how did you first get introduced to BNI? So I went to a speed networking thing because my boss was like, you need to focus on sourcing um, find people who can help you generate the business that you're looking for. And um, I went to a speed networking thing. I think it, the ticket was like $20 and it was just a shot in the dark. I really didn't know what to expect. It sounded fun. I've never speed dated before. So I was like, I'm never going to do that. But this is a good way to see what it's like sure. to get to know one, someone in three minutes. And I met Adam Rodriguez, who is with um, CPI security, and he is in a chapter in Fuquay. And he mentioned that BNI was awesome. Steve Hand was there Very at nice. the speed networking thing, of course. Steve's everywhere. Yeah. And um, I got the opportunity to meet him. And it was maybe two weeks later that he was inviting me to Terrence Boykin, our realtor's new chapter that he was starting up. I um, got to where we were meeting, and there were three of us there. 
I got really warm connections with everyone, liked the vibe everyone was giving me, and then put my application in that day. And in a traditional B&I chapter, the hot seats are the realtor, the mortgage broker, and the PNC insurance seat. Yes. And when any one of those seats come open, it is a nice recruiting battle. It's very good for the chapter because they can pick the best person for the chapter. So Mm -hmm. it's kind of nice to have two or three, four people to choose from. What did you do? What did you think you had to do to separate yourself from the other two people that were applying? Um, just mean what I say and, and say what I do, you know, just, or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just do what I say I'm going to do. Um, it was really important to prove myself, you know, cause I was very new in the industry. Mm -hmm. So I knew a lot about what I needed to do for the industry, but maybe products I was still working on learning. Um, so I guess the honest, I was really honest, um, about what I can do, what I can't do. Um, I could have, taken the life seat as well. I am licensed in life insurance, okay. um, but I, you know, bowed out to that one as well saying, you know, maybe there's somebody more qualified that can service the group better because I want to focus on growing my property and casualty business. And um, I think that's what it was, just the honesty. Okay. You know, this is what I can do. This is what I want to do. This is how I can help. And it worked. Everyone, everyone liked the way it sounded. So is that the only chapter you visited? Yeah. Okay. Very well, nice. I visited another chapter that had another PNC person, but I visited just to see kind of what the layout of BNI was. Um, but I knew walking into that group that I would not be joining the group that I visited yeah. before our group. Yeah. So when you left your first meeting, not before you got accepted, but mm-hmm. just your first meeting in the chapter, what were your takeaways about? Holy I was cow. so excited. <laughs> I was so excited. One, because if you haven't met Terrence Boykin, our residential realtor, um, he's amazing. He's super dialed in to his network and he has a lot of goals for himself. So I was excited that I had the opportunity to work with somebody who had um, as big of goals as I had for myself. Um, the creativity from everybody in the group had me really excited. Um, and I was just racking my brain like, who can I bring here? Who else would would benefit from this? And, you know, just swarms of names started coming to me of people that would benefit from it and started inviting and the chapter just kind of grew from there. Yeah. So what kind of things did you put into place once you joined the chapter from a marketing standpoint, sales standpoint, mm-hmm. what kind of things did you put into place knowing the connections you have in that room? Um, so I knew that I needed to focus more on my marketing. So I put blocks in my schedule for, you know, when I could set aside time for BNI. So the first hour after BNI is usually when I reach out to you know, people who I met at the group um, say thank you for coming and, you know, invite them to coffee um, just so I can get to know them better. And then secondly, I added time on my schedule for marketing on LinkedIn and Facebook so that I could remember to post all of the great things that I got from BNI as well as continue to market myself to those connections that I'm getting from the so they can, my yes. 60 seconds isn't enough to no. know how awesome I am, you yeah. know, so I, go. I like I, that. I've got to keep putting it out there on LinkedIn. But a lot of people don't do that. They, they just feel like, well, I, I just, I met three people today. That was a good day. And they take, take no advantage of social media. Oh, no. And you're way behind the eight ball if you're not these days. Oh yeah, for sure. So, and there are, what, 17,000 insurance agents probably in the triangle that you yeah. have to compete against. There's quite a few. So what do you tell people that separates you from them? Um, I take a full comprehensive approach when I talk to my clients. I don't match coverage with coverage. If you have had a policy that hasn't been reviewed in the last two years, or if I say, tell me what your bodily injury limits are, and somebody does not know, that raises a red flag for me. And I like to go through and ask questions. And people, I find that people get a little bit intimidated by it, but by the end of the conversation, they really enjoy that I kind of question them on why. Um, because it allows me to provide that education to them. So, you know, why were these bodily injury limits selected? When were they selected and by who? Did you choose these? Did this sound like a good idea for you? Or did someone tell you this is what you need? Um, And and I take that approach with every single person I talk to. It doesn't matter if, if you're 70 and you've been driving for 55 years, you know, does your coverage still make sense for the part of your yeah. life that you're in? Has anything changed for you in the last two years? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got a new grandson. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> stuff changes on a regular basis. And we just need to make sure that we have the coverage in place so that when life changes, you're still protected. 
And the consumer mm -hmm. can be their own worst enemy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my car's covered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with, I've got full what, coverage. Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> what does it mean? Does it mean if you get in an accident, your company is going to pay the full amount of the accident? Or how much are you responsible for? You know, I've, I've had clients that have had roof claims and living on a very minimal budget. But when they first qualified to purchase this new home, they had a very small budget. They were maybe just barely qualifying for the loan. So they were like, I want the most basic insurance policy I can get. So what that means to the customer is no personal property replacement costs. So when they lose items, they get the actual cash value of what their items are. And it means a high deductible. So you get customers that their deductible is 2500 And they're like, I don't have that much money. How, how am I supposed yeah. to get my roof fixed? And that's, that's where that education, you know, pulls in and ask, why was this chosen? Why do you have a $2,500 deductible? You know, if you're struggling to make, and no offense, you know, but if you're struggling to make your $50 car payments, what's going to happen when you have a claim on your home and your deductible is $2,500? How, how are you going to do that? No, oh, yeah. So B&I is... Uh we got about 40 chapters all throughout the triangle. If you want to get in touch with them, please come visit a chapter, whether you're starting a business, growing a business, or know somebody that is doing one of those two and just wants to learn a little bit more. Uh, you can call the office at 919-465-1667, or you can shoot them uh, an email, Steve, Mary, or Brenda, triangleBNI at yahoo.com. They'll answer any questions you have, they invite you to a chapter, help you find one that might be to your liking. Because uh, it's crucial that you have seats in there that make sense for you as referral mm -hmm. partners. So, what have you learned? You, obviously, the realtor was get, was a key seat for mm -hmm. you. You need that good relationship. What has uh, surprised you about a particular seat that somebody owned? And also in B and I, it's seat specific, so it's uh, that's another plus for joining B and I. There's only one mm -hmm. property and casual insurance person in the chapter, mm -hmm. so all the referrals go to you. Mm -hmm. So, did a relationship come with another? person in a seat that you probably didn't see coming, first of all? Um, yeah. So Susan Beavers is our health insurance provider. She's with U.S. Health Advisors. And I did not expect the majority of my closed business referrals have come from Susan. And a lot of the referrals that she's received and has closed have come from me. And I guess I didn't expect that because I figured, when am I ever going to have a chance to talk to my customers about their health insurance? And if I'm talking about their car, how willing are they going to be to give me answers on what their health insurance coverage is like? Are they happy with it? Mm -hmm. And could there be room for improvement? So I didn't expect that. Um, but Susan has turned out to be a, a very, I couldn't do it without her, kind yeah. of referral partner. And as a member of BNI also, it teaches you to listen, first of all, because givers gain. But it teaches you to listen, then ask questions. I was at a client's house the other day, mm -hmm. just taking care of some business there, spraying for mosquitoes. And we're just kind of talking. You build up the relationship over time. He's a Yankees fan. He's got a new kid. Of course, I'm showing everybody the picture of, of my course. grandson and all that. So we're talking stuff. <laughs> and I just, you know, I try to leave there saying, if there's any other things you need with your house, I've got mm -hmm. referral partners I know. And he just, he said, I need a carpet cleaner mm -hmm. and I need a grout cleaner. Called my carpet cleaner, Julie and Tony Smith at Steam Pro. Mm -hmm. And uh, got them on, she got on the phone with them the next day. But just stuff like that is mm -hmm. you, that's a beauty of being I just teach you to listen now mm -hmm. so you can help. Yeah. I, I mean, it's a matter of adding one or two more questions into the 15 mm -hmm. or 20 that I already go through. One or two questions, two or three minutes out of their time, they're, they're not going to really care about. You're not, they're not really going to miss it. But what they will miss is if, if they needed to downsize and they needed to work with a really good realtor, yeah. and if they didn't get to meet Terrence, that's where they miss out. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so one of the things you were talking about earlier with a uh, uh, homeowner's policy I did not learn till I got into the small business world that if you have pick somebody and an, an air conditioning person in, in a carpet cleaner, anybody coming on to, into your house, if they get hurt and they don't have insurance, your homeowner's policy pays for that. Yes. And I had no idea that that was the case. Yes. So it's always good to ask somebody. And here's the, the funny part of this. I know you've seen this because we get this question Two mm -hmm. people go, you're insured, right? And it, we are. And I say, yes. And they go, oh, okay. No, 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 no. You need to ask yeah. for something a little bit more. Give me proof. Yeah. But yeah. I did not know that. And you get mm -hmm. roofers and, mm -hmm. you know, somebody gets shocked with something or fall off that. are not bonded and insured. Oh, yeah. They'll tell you they are. They probably put it on their truck. Bonded and insured. Well, you know, mm -hmm. produce paperwork. Yeah. Show me. Yeah. 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 
So a uh, leadership team in mm-hmm. your chapter, you are involved in that. Yes. yes. I have two roles. Um, so I'm the visitor's host. So I always say I'm the hostess with the mostest. There you go. I am the one who greets you when you come in the door. So when you're coming on Monday, come check me out. Um, I'll be there bright and early. I usually get there about an hour <laughs> ahead of time to set up the room, make sure it's perfect. Um, but I get everyone oriented, get them introduced to the person in the group that they should really get a chance to meet and work more with outside of um, the BNI group. And I'm also the mentor coordinator. So I make sure that everyone in our group has the resources that they need from BNI to make sure that they are getting their money's worth, their time's worth, um, and just to make sure that, you know, the the process is being done the way that BNI expects it to be done. And we've seen people join BNI and they don't activate it. They just show up each week and they figure, oh, I'll just get two or three referrals every week because I'm like cool that. and everybody no. likes me. It's like it does not. But if they activate it, you mm-hmm. quickly see the jump in the numbers, don't you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. if how, you're involved yeah. and you're not there because your boss paid you to be there and they're hoping to get something out of it, you yeah. know, if, if you're not givers gain, you know, if you're not there to give as much as you're expecting to get, it's not going to work for you. And one of the first things you asked me this question earlier, and I should have said this. One of the first things that I wanted to do when I joined the BNI group was identify every single person what their business was, make sure I understood their business, Mm -hmm. and then go through all the lists of customers I had just worked with, maybe 30, last 30, last month, and figure out a place where I could have asked them a question to help that person. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And once I identified that, that's when Susan and I relationship went up. Okay. Yeah, that's when everything just started going the way it needed to go. Well, and that's one of the beauties of BNI is you walk in, we've got 25 in my chapter and I've got 24 other salespeople to help me because a lot of people in BNI are solopreneurs. So it's tough to go out and work your business mm-hmm. and sell your business mm-hmm. um, in those situations. So I got 24 other people looking out for mm-hmm. me and just another reason to join yeah, BNI. Absolutely. Would you not agree? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and visitor host, a lot of people don't get the value of that job because you get to meet everybody. You're probably every the person. only one at each meeting that gets to meet every visitor. Yes. And it's just wonderful for business. Yes. Because they is. see you, they see your face, they ask you what you do, and mm-hmm. then you see How them. does this work? Yeah. What do I do? <laughs> How do I do this? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, you've seen that yeah. look before. Yeah, people yeah. walk in and just. You, people you, walk in and just stand like. I, I'm here. Or, or my boss. What did I, I just get invited out. to? You know, <laughs> but but then by the end, they're like, oh, my gosh, like, this yeah. is so great. What, when are you guys doing this again? <laughs> Next Monday, 830 yeah. right here. Yeah. And you want people to think of it as a I try to tell people just think of it as a client, not mm-hmm. 18 or 25 individuals or a meeting, because mm-hmm. if you look at it that way, it's and intimidating. I think a, a lot of people in B&I will say that it's conservatively worth at least 25 percent of their bottom line. Right. And so if you had another client that was worth 25% of your bottom line and they said, hey, every Tuesday, Brianna, we're meeting at Starbucks or Pick a Place mm-hmm. for a coffee to talk about my business, guess where you're going to be every Tuesday? Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So a couple, couple things on your bio that I wanted to dig into. Um, we fill out a gains profile. So when you do have a one-to-one with somebody in your chapter or somebody in B&I, they can read through this. So you can kind of get some questions, get a feel for the person. Instead of spending the first 30 minutes talking about, hey, tell me about your life. Oh, you mm-hmm. tell me about your life. And instead of getting out of the business, who do you know? Yes. So goals uh, to earn sales rep two promotion by December 2018. Yes. A, are you on track? Absolutely. B, I'm on track. what does that mean to those of us not in the yeah, insurance world? Yeah, so um, to, I talked about qualifying for assistance and that there were assistants that work with some of the reps in my office. To qualify for one, I have to be a sales rep two have the production, but I also need to be sales rep too for a whole year before I can be promoted to lead sales rep. Okay. The ultimate goal is just to get my own office and have my own entire Mm -hmm. room that I can just hang out in and meet my clients in. But, you know, that'll take me about 10, 15 years to achieve that. So sales rep too is my first, first one, just knocking them all down as I go. Okay. I like that. And under accomplishments, which a lot of people are hesitant to brag about, but I'm glad you do. 12-time Carolina Closers Club winner. Yeah. Do tell. So Carolina Closers Club is um, designed for reps in the office who meet their production goals. Um, The standard is 10. So if you're selling 10 policies a week, then you qualify for Carolina Closers. Um, So if you do, I mean, that's 120 policies in one year up until this point. I mean. 
company likes the way that sounds. So they like to reward us for it. And I always like to, you know, I don't like to compare myself to people in my same tenure. I like to go after the the bigger goose before me, Mm -hmm. you know. So I compare my number to sales reps to to sales rep to professionals. And um, on the closer board is where I can see kind of where they're at, where I'm at, and know what I need to do to get ahead of them. And who sets that goal, the monthly goal, the annual goal? We set our goals ourselves. Um, Of course, the home office they want a certain amount of production, you, you know, you but <laughs> anyone in the insurance agency industry will tell you, 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 you decide how much you want to make, okay. you know, you can control how many calls you make, how many customers you follow up with, how many networking events you go to, to, you know, fill the funnel, so to speak. Um, so I personally set my goals. Like my goal this year, home office goal was five. Mine was 20. <laughs> You know, like my goals are way over what home office is asking me for. And how have you changed that number since you Absolutely. joined BNI and kind of figured it out how it would work? Oh, yeah. Um, I, not just because of BNI, but, you know, there are different trips and stuff, you know, Liberty Mutual sends us on. And, and maybe after the first quarter, I realized that I was not where I needed to be for the, um, you know, the, the, Aruba trip or wherever oh, okay. it is. I think right. it's uh, Atlantis. Oh, yeah. It's Atlantis this oh, yeah. year. Um, so I realized I was not where I wanted to be, that there were things I could do to fix it. Okay. Um, so I started funneling more time into BNI. That two hours turned into four hours a week. All it Thanks. is is a Saturday, you know, a Saturday to send emails. Uh, yeah. And that's just kind of what I did. So the gains profile, going back to this, uh, explains a lot about who we are and what we do. It's your goals your accomplishments, your interests, your networks, and your mm-hmm. skills. And that makes up a lot of things. For example, under interest, a lot of times if you don't meet with somebody on a one-to-one, mm-hmm. you're like, well, I don't know anything about you. Mm-hmm. I know you went to uh, I know you went to uh, yeah. Meredith, yeah. and you're from Durham, but I, I see her once a week and all <laughs> yeah. that stuff. So one of the things on here that I always like looking for, and I tell people all the time, B&I is full of people that are very involved in the community, and mm-hmm. you are another one. What are some of the things you do inside the community? So I love to volunteer. Um, one of the networks that I'm a part of is the Raleigh Realtors Association. Um, and we do a bunch of community service type product projects throughout the year. Um, one that we most recently finished up was my journey bag. We put together duffel bags that were stuffed with um, shampoo, conditioner, body washes, toothbrush, toothpaste, basketballs, blankets, um, notebooks for children who are transitioning into foster care because generally there's no appointment no one says hey I'm gonna come knock on your door and I'm gonna take your child out of your home you know that's not expected so what the social worker has is a 30 minute time frame to get the belongings that the child needs for the next week and get them out of the house remove wow. them okay. so my journey bag fills the bag the duffel bag with what they need generally that you know their clothes are shoved in a trash bag or you know a uh, a Whole Foods bag, or Whole Foods doesn't have bags, Food Lion bag, you know, and um, that's that's where their stuff is. So the child's memory is my belongings were thrown into a trash bag and I was removed from my parents. My journey bag gives them a duffel bag. It gives them some comforting items. You know, there are some iPods, like little mini iPods that we put in them just to make the transition a little bit more, it's not going to be comfortable, but at least make it a little bit more peaceful and make you feel a little bit more like a person especially for the older kids you know? oh yeah we, i mean we were we we did them anywhere from infant to 17 years old you know and as a 17 year old that's just you don't want to go to school the next day like that yeah how many different projects a year will the organization uh, look at i think 12 okay yeah so i um volunteered two wednesdays ago at the soup kitchen mm-hmm. and that was a really really fun experience they um every single day at 11 to 12 o'clock anyone and everyone can stand in line and get a hot nourishing meal no questions asked you Mm -hmm. don't have to be homeless you could be i saw people there in in business attire like what i wear daily you know no questions asked you get to sit down and eat a nice meal yeah it was a lot of food too i was like oh my gosh like that's their whole meal you know there was like maybe four or five hot food items there was a sandwich piece of pizza a you know a dessert there was soup 
drinks. I mean, I was like, oh, she's like a four course meal, you know, but but it's free. No questions mm-hmm. asked. And I felt good while I was doing it. it does put things into perspective. doesn't yeah. it? And makes your work a little harder. Yeah. yeah and so from that and one back. thing, one of the, you know, realtors that I was working with was like, my son's going to start driving soon and I'm scared to death. I don't know what to expect. I know it's going to be expensive. I have friends that have been in that position. Can I ask you for help? And I was like, absolutely. But she would not have wanted to work with me, you know, had we have not been mm-hmm. in that same. And it's kind of like how BNI is, you know. Like, oh, yeah. I get questions all the time. Like, does this sound right? My agent just sent me this letter. Does this look right? And, and I can kind of help. help. So I guess one of the first things you want from somebody is just a chance to look over their policy, yeah. right? It's about your only, oh, your first Five ask, minutes right? of their time just to make sure that they're getting the best value. And if they are, I'll be the first person to say, you look good where you're at. Mm-hmm. Here might be some minor suggestions. Since you mentioned this coverage was important to you. I don't see that this coverage is available on your current policy. Ask about that. But price wise, even with the coverage, we don't we don't look like we're going to be competitive. That's fine. Is there is there a constant glaring thing that just jumps out at you when you kind of spend five minutes to look over policy where we as the consumers are just woefully short? Yeah. So if someone has state minimum insurance, uh, which we kind of talked about a Mm -hmm. little bit earlier um, in the state of North Carolina, they only require that you have 30,000 per person. 60,000 per incident bodily injury coverage and a minimum of 25,000 property damage coverage. So what that means is if you get in an accident and you're at fault, you get in your car and you're driving and you hit the Bentley in front of you, you total the Bentley because, you know, it's got backup cameras, all sorts of safety features, which you can rear in somebody and just the safety camera can total the vehicle on some of these. Really? Oh, yeah, because they're expensive. They're expensive technologies to have if you run into that bentley maybe it's fifty sixty thousand dollar car and you total it your policy said we did our part we paid twenty five thousand go after the insured so what that means to you is an is it yeah is the at fault driver is you need to come up with the other forty five thousand dollars to replace the bentley you just totaled and a lot of the people that are maybe driving with that minimum coverage don't realize that and no. they don't realize it until they get into that accident. And and then it's too late because you can't say, can I call and up my insurance coverage <laughs> effective yesterday? Yeah. It doesn't work like that, you know, so. And we we're talking earlier just about the levels of coverage. And and sometimes it's it's too, well, most of the time it's to protect yourself. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it truly is. If you were, you're telling a story earlier about an uninsured motorist hitting you, mm-hmm. you're on your own. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So my dad was rear-ended by someone who was driving. Mm-hmm. His girlfriend's car and the girlfriend had let the insurance on the car lapse and he personally had no insurance. So generally speaking, the insurance on the car would have went first and then the driver. Neither of them had insurance. So luckily, my dad was insured enough on his policy that his bodily injury was taken care of. He was able to go to the doctor and seek medical help and returning visits, you know, just continue to add up the medical debt. His policy is able to pay for that as well as the damage to his vehicle. Are people more likely to over or under cover or under inch over under insure the car versus the house? Is there any trend to that? Mm, I feel like with their house, people are a little bit more like, okay, like I don't want to be stuck in a position. Home home ownership is just so stressful anyway. <laughs> you know, just <laughs> the, the thought of knowing if something happens, like I can't call a landlord to fix this. Yeah. Um, so I think that people are are less open to less coverage on the home than they are on the car. Or maybe I've seen where they will sacrifice coverage on the auto to allow more coverage on the home. Um, at the end of the day, nobody wants to make the decision to have less coverage. It's just one of those kind of finance bound kind of decisions that mm-hmm. have to be made in some circumstances. Um, in my opinion, you can't over, I know you went to say over insure. In my opinion, you can't over insure. True. True. Um, <laughs> but you know, cause there's always those what ifs, you know, what if I kill somebody? Mm-hmm. What if, you know, kind of oh, yeah. questions. That. And I know a lot of people feel like, well, and again, we think we know what we have covered, and a lot of us just, mm-hmm. we really don't. Mm-hmm. We just throw out a number like, oh, I've got this, and just kind yeah. of puff up your chest, all that. You know yeah. you're not, probably not even close. So one of my first questions <laughs> is, tell me about your bodily injury limits. And uh, people will say, oh, I've got full coverage, which has like, 
I mean, it does have something to do with the bodily injury limits, but it's not what I'm asking. What I'm asking is, do you have that 3060? Do you know that you have that 3060 or do you know that you have higher or better than the lowest that you're allowed to by North Carolina law? And most, I'd probably say 90%, 93 even. I could say even 95% are like, I've got full coverage. Oh, I've got liability. But, well, what does that mean? <laughs> Is is my next question. I don't know, but it's the answer I've been saying for yes. eight years. So can you tell me what that means is usually my second no, question. No, we can't. And they're like, uh, that my car is fully covered? Like, no, mm. even full coverage doesn't mean that. So, yeah. And I know a lot of us feel like our homeowners covers the contents of the house, which it does. Mm -hmm. But if you've got very nice jewelry, paintings, mm -hmm. things like that, you would probably want to look to get those additionally insured, correct? Yes, mm -hmm. for sure. And yeah, and it's called scheduling property. And every you can pull it up online on the insurance website and see what the basic policy covers. But when they send you that hundred page, sixty page packet of, you know, the legal talk of what your policy covers, you need to look at what your property, or what your property is valued at, and what it's covered at. Before I moved back up here, I lived in Florida for 10 years and never really had to deal with a hurricane. So the first one that came through oh. was like, huh, that's interesting. Yes. And it was just beat into my head by my insurance guy. He goes, just videotape everything in your house. Yes. Just walk around the house. Yes, take pictures. Right, just to have that. We actually have a home protector app where you can go and take pictures of all of your like electronics and record the serial number. Um, so that's you can do that like maybe once a quarter. But anytime you add new things into the home, you yeah. want to. Or if you move. Yes, you want to do that. Do you accept a picture of a sealed box that's been through two moves that you have no idea what's in there? Can you? No, can't roll the dice on that. Yeah, no. Because we all have three of those. Yeah. And I think the rule is you're supposed to throw it away yeah, after I two mean, moves, for, right? For the most, I mean, for the most part, we kind of take your word for what you say mm -hmm. you have. Um, but if you start saying, oh, I've got $3,000 in cash in this trunk, like that's, well, you're not getting that back. You should have put that into something better. You deserve yeah. what you get if you've got cash in your trunk. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so another one of your accomplishments is eight consecutive time winner of Pace Setters. Yeah. What so, is that? So Pace Setters is just the company setting the pace for yourself. So they expect you to, you know, kind of, kind of go up and up and up and up. It starts low. Um, but the point of pace setters is to continue to grow with the company. So the fact that I did it the first time was really exciting. But when I started hitting, you know, five, six, seven, eight, that's eight consecutive months that I've been on plan selling for commission, you know, that I have hit the numbers I said I was going to hit. And, more. and again, another reason to join B and I, and we ask that you uh, give our office here a call, talk to Steve, Mary, or Brenda at uh, 919-465-1667. When you are 100% commission, take all the help you can get, oh, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When when Steve told me, do you want a, you want a band of 40 people that will go out and promote your business? Like, <laughs> for, for what I, you know, for what B and I costs, I mean, it's, it's a steal. I expected it to be much more expensive, honestly. When when I got yeah. when I got the um you know the kind of what we expect you to pay kind of thing, I was like, wow, six hundred bucks for a year? Like yeah. I can't, I can't beat that. No, that's a couple couple yeah. referrals for people, depending yeah. on what industry you're in. Yeah. And we've had home builders in here and realtors in here, and that's a tiny one for them. Yeah, for a realtor, <laughs> so, you sell one house, you made your money. Yeah, you know I've. I, I tell people all the time when they're like, well, why would I do this? And I'm like, look, I understand the financial burden, $600. I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. But how many roofs do you have to replace to make $600? Yeah. Oh, yeah. For, for me, I have to do quite a few more policies. But in my time with B&I, I have made my $600 at least 12 times. Oh, yeah. At yeah. least 12 times. Yeah. And we just kicked off our chapter, of, you know, not that long ago. November. It, yeah. November. And when you do join, it's a hundred and fifty dollar uh, fee and then it's four forty five a year. And if you break that down, that's what, thirty five, thirty eight bucks a month. And mm -hmm. if you break it down even more, we're looking at ten bucks a week to market, which you're gonna do anyways, probably yes. if you want to grow yeah. your company. <laughs> yeah. So why would you not do that? Yeah. And you know people are gonna bring referrals to you mm -hmm. if they get to know you. Mm -hmm. So it's always interesting in B and I when you try to explain. We're all we're all good at standing up, telling what we do, mm -hmm. 
And a lot of times uh, we have to say what we don't do. Like, I'm not going to go up in the attic and chase a rabid raccoon. You don't have <laughs> enough zeros in your bank account. Yes. I've got somebody for you to call. Yes. But the other thing I like when people do when they have their 10 minutes is talk about myths in their profession because we all have them, whether yes. you're lawyer, teacher, doctor, pest control, <laughs> insurance, and all that stuff. So give us a couple in the insurance world that matter to the customer that we need to listen for. Um, so property and casualty specific, it you know, I talked about state minimum coverage. The next jump up for most people is like $5 a month. To double your coverage, to have twice as much bodily injury coverage if you hurt somebody, it's like $5 a month. Mm -hmm. People expect, oh, well, if I'm going to have a lot of insurance, it's going to be a lot of money. Yeah. You talked about protection on the house, someone falling off mm -hmm. the roof and getting hurt. Liability insurance is one of the cheapest things you can buy. Most policies for homeowners are 300000 is what you know most people recommend. I'll max it out to a, a million. Do you want to know what the difference is for three hundred thousand to a million? Eight dollars a year or a, month? a year. You're kidding. A year, not a month. Eight dollars right. a year, right? For more than three times the coverage. So if they visited your chapter every Monday and heard you talk about that, not mm -hmm. only would they be smarter, but they probably have they probably go home and pull out their policy. Yeah, like I got to get Brianna to go to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And people don't realize that it's it's. One of the biggest myths is that it's going to be more expensive to insure yourself to oh, what yeah. your family deserves. It's really not. Yeah. You, you, it might be 5 or $10, but for the example I gave earlier, you're crashing into the Bentley. How many years is it going to take you to come up with $45,000? Be a while. Know? A you lot know? of people be a while. I would have rather paid 5 6 $7 more a month, $10, $20 more a month to not have to $45,000 bill over my head, not to have, you know— it be threatened that my wages be garnished or have it threatened that my home be taken out from under me. Oh, and I'm sure you've heard stories from people after something has happened. Oh, and yeah. it's the look on their face like, I should have done, mm -hmm. fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things that I tell myself every day is, you know, tell them the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want somebody to call me and say, why didn't you tell me that? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me that? You know, it's, yeah. information is king yeah knowledge is key for yeah. sure and you feel like if if you have all the information you could make a rational decision yeah but if you get all that exactly and on the same side life insurance wise people expect that life insurance is going to be so expensive you know i say outside of work what policy do you have that you control that you operate that if you leave your job tomorrow your boss makes you mad you walk out the door what do you have mm -hmm. people are like oh well i've got it through work so we don't even need to talk about it Okay, so what happens, what really yeah. happens if you leave your job or your job leaves you, and then you get mad and you get in a car accident and you die? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Got People expect that life insurance is going to be really expensive, too, and, you know, as little as $10, $15 a month, most people smoking or yeah. McDonald's habit, coffee habit, can protect Yeah, I'm a, de I'm a regular decaf guy, so yeah. I'm not, I've, I hear stories about Starbucks and five, yeah. and I hear I don't five drink coffee 50. Either, yeah, so it's yeah. like, no, nah, just give me the $2 cup. I'll mm -hmm. put some cream in and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, now you get to other foods and stuff like that. It's another story, but on the coffee, it's a... Yeah, I'll pass on the coffee, but definitely pass me the cupcake. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> so what, it, what, uh, what kind of jump in your revenue, just percentage-wise, do you think B&I has added? Uh, so on a... Every single policy that I sell, I track the source, mm -hmm. and I scroll through it all the time. And when I started um, BNI, I was probably 20% referrals. That's just customer referrals. I'm 45% referrals now with BNI. That's customer and BNI referrals. But to have 45% of my business as an insurance agent not be from me pounding the phone and yeah. making 1,000 phone calls a day or – Sending a thousand emails from just people saying, "Hey, Brianna's awesome. You really mm -hmm. should give her a, a a chance. Give her a call really quick." Yeah, B and I did. did so a lot minimum twenty five percent of your bottom line. Yeah. You could credit to B and I after less than a year. Well, less than a year in the business, yeah. right? Yeah. I hope people listening heard that. So that's why you should come visit a B and I <laughs> chapter, folks. Yes. That's exactly why it. That's the power it has. Yes. When you activate it, but you do. I know you're big on one to one, so you're mm -hmm. getting out there. So the people in your chapter know how to sell you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really important that when you have a one-on-one, -on -one, this is how I want to be mentioned. This, this is a mm -hmm. great way to introduce me. For example, you know, a financial advisor. You're talking to your customers on how to protect their assets and how to continue to grow their assets for more time to come. 
you need to also tell them that they need to protect those assets. So that million dollars worth of liability that only will cost them $8 a year, they need to be on the phone with me seeing how that can be done. It's, yeah, again, we think we know how other industries work and, and we really don't, but stuff like that is good to know. So in your chapter, how long or how, have you, how do you go about educating the individuals and the people in your, and the, even the visitors in your chapter? Um, 10 minute presentations, mm -hmm. saying something different every week, you know, not sharing the same story over and over again. You know, I have so many customer interactions. I probably, I couldn't even go through all of them, you know, the things that I could educate my chapter with, but just that kind of stuff. Do you remember your first referral from BNI? Oh, no, I can't say that I do. There's been so many. There you go. Yeah. Good answer. <laughs> yeah. There's been so many since that first one. The mortgage loan officer who joined my chapter was also at that speed networking event that I went to. And I didn't get a chance to meet him at the event. Um, you know, we were both on the seat where you sit put and then everyone else was moving around. So we didn't get in front of each other. But some Adam, the CPI guy, was like, mm -hmm. hey, did you see that mortgage loan officer over there? I know mortgage loan officers are good. So I went and I was like, Brad, here's my card. Let's grab coffee. We grab coffee like the next Tuesday. This was on a Friday. So we grabbed coffee the next Tuesday. And by that following Monday, he was in our chapter, joined and approved. Is what we did. Very nice. Yeah. And so you have in your group, you have a very seasoned veteran in Bill Davis. Yes. An upcoming guest on the show. Bill had yes. a wealth, wealth of knowledge yeah. and resources. I, I can't wait to actually watch his interview. He's probably going to blow me out of the water and I'm going to look like a silly goose. But <laughs> he is so good at this. He, he just. Is, uh, he has yeah. been participating in BNI for just as long, if not longer, I believe, than Steve Hand, the director. I mean, they've oh, known yeah. each oh, other yeah. forever. Yeah. And I'm so jealous of how much they know each other. You'll be there. I know. They're a little older than you. You'll I know, get there. So. But gosh, Always, so far ahead of me. And with uh, with small business owners, and, and you're actually, even though you work for Liberty Mutual, you're yeah. basically a small business yeah, owner because you got your own shingle and yeah. it's all up to you. So yes. I always consider people small yes. business owners. Love to hear that aha moment when they know, you know, I think I'm going to make it in this world. Yeah. When was yours for insurance? Mm -hmm. Have you had it yet? I, I think when I started looking at my performance, like I said, I don't compare myself to people in my tenure. I compare myself to the next step ahead, you know, the, the senior sales reps, the lead sales reps. When I started seeing that I have the production of, people that have been in our company for 15, 20 years, and I'm just starting, mm -hmm. that's kind of where I was like, oh, I might yeah. be doing something. <laughs> yeah. What is, and we talked about marketing earlier, and there's different ways. You, you, the goal is to get 100% referral. That's mm -hmm. the goal. But when we're all starting out, it just yeah. it doesn't work that way. So what's a typical, what, what kind of time each week do you give to marketing, and what different ways do you spend that on? Um. So I set aside like two hours to focus on Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, I like to post um, educational pieces that I think would be good for people in my connection base, as well as for those people to like and show their, their connections can see those. Um, I like to post like, did you knows or ask me this kind yeah. of things? Like, let me address some of these myths before I get your customer on the phone so that maybe you can tell them too. Um, and um, I like to, you know, post the success that I'm having and that. You yeah. still, you still in the making phone call stage? Oh yeah. yeah. I think, you know, in this industry, that's never going to stop. You know, okay. there there's, I'm always going to have to make phone calls. People don't want to talk about their insurance. They don't want to switch. They expect that it's going to be harder than it is mm -hmm. when all it is is, okay, let's make this payment. Here is the letter to cancel with your current carrier. They will refund you what they need to refund you, and you're going to save $300 this year. Like, that's not difficult yeah. to save $300. I mean, the process takes me, like, less than 10 minutes to do, but. People expect it to be much harder than it is. Yeah, and with caller ID, I'm sure you get a lot of voicemails, right? Oh yeah. Nice. How do you how do you get the list of phone numbers? Who you call and how do you know? Um, so I do a lot of like events. So we'll do like expos or like charity runs and walks. 
Um, we're all get, I have a few different accounts. So I have like assisted living facility, assisted senior living facility that I work with to offer their employees additional discounts on their auto and home insurance. The company, like the facility itself, doesn't pay extra for that, but we offer not only my consultative abilities, but also the discount just so that we have access to the employees and make sure that they have what they need to make sure that their families are properly protected. Like they're here to work, they're here to make money, but have they put it where it needs to go so that if something bad happens, they're protected. So your biggest client, without asking name or numbers, what all do they have with you? Um, So I have one family that has auto insurance for their three cars and their boat or their jet ski, not boat, excuse me. They have their homeowner's insurance policy. They have a $2 million umbrella policy Ooh. because they have a lot of assets that they want to protect, and they don't want to get in that accident where they hit the Bentley, and then they're like, we got to pay more years of out of our yeah. 401K. Um, they also have a life insurance policy, um, permanent as well as term on both parents, so that's four, and then three children each have a gift of life insurance policy that, the parents will pay for for 20 years, but mm-hmm. the children will have for their entire life $50,000 worth of permanent protection that can't be taken from them and grows cash value. So if they ever need to borrow from it to go to school or put a down payment on a car, they can do it. And we do, we've not even talked about an umbrella policy and how valuable that can be. Yeah. Right? That's just, that's a whole yes, other hour. You need an umbrella. <laughs> yeah, I could t- tell you horror stories. So what kind of things are you doing to help your chapter grow? Um, so we, um, working with the Meredith College Alumni Association, I have, um, connections with the, um, athletic department director and there is a wellness coach, Kimball Sargent, and, um, as well as Susan from U.S. Health Advisors and John Martinez, who is our photographer. The four of us sat down and we're like, how can we get in front of someone that all four of us service so that we can just boom, 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 all in one bang, give them, you know our services and, and help those customers out. And it was the Meredith College Athletic Department. I was like, bing, that sounds like a good really? idea. Because for me, college students need life insurance. They don't know that they need life insurance, but if they don't have permanent life insurance now, the older they get, every year I can 100% guarantee them that it will be more expensive than it would have been the following year had they have got it in place. Um, so that's how I can grow from it. Our photographer can grow from it because he can do many senior photo mm-hmm. sessions or sports sessions, you know, for for these um, student uh, for the students and for the uh, sports team. And then also, Susan, right when college college kids are getting into college and getting out of college, that's when their parents are like, "You're on your own. Yeah. Find your own <laughs> health insurance." So she can help with mm-hmm. that. And then Kimball wants yeah. to work with athletic Kimball's people stuff, anyway, yeah. oh, so. Yeah. That's yeah. how she can work with them. And, and she does um, like fundraisers and stuff. So she could very bring accurate. value, you know, back very, yeah. to the very organization. And that's, again, that's what makes a successful chapter mm-hmm. is you got people who just sit down and come up with that idea. And even if it only helps four people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is mid-August already of 2018. I can't believe it's so August. December of 2019. Yes. What's your small business going to look like? Um, I will have my sales rep two promotion. My lead sales rep promotion will be coming into gear for January of 19. Um, or I guess it's 20. Yeah. So that's what it's going to look like. I'm, I'm definitely hoping to have a sales associate by then. Um, and I guess uh, revenue-wise, I'd, I'd like to have 300 policies, 400 policies per line. So how can B I how can B and I help you get to that number? Well, Terrence sells more houses. That's <laughs> all he has to do, right? Brad, Terrence, you're listening. Yeah, yeah. Br- Terrence sell more houses. Um, you know, Brad, cure more loans. <laughs> <laughs> um, th- that's one way, for sure. And another way is for me to continue feeding everyone in my group mm-hmm. so that it can kind of circle its way back around. So for B and I, what would you tell folks? If you looked in the camera and told them why they should be in BNI. If I looked into the camera <laughs> and I told someone why they should join BNI, it's because it's a room for full of 25 to 40 professionals 
that know your business just as well as you do so that they can get the people that you want to be in front of in front of you. Um, the, the only question that someone has to ask to refer, literally my client base is everyone. I can talk to mm -hmm. everyone about their insurance. Everyone who drives a car, everyone who owns a home, everyone who has a physical body and needs to protect their body with life insurance. That's everyone. All that I need someone to ask is, do you have auto and a home and life insurance? Are you happy with it? Yeah. Have you, know, you reviewed it recently? Well, I'll just go in there. You like know? you said earlier, just you need five minutes. Somebody brings yes. it into you in a meeting or something like that. It'd take you. Yeah. yeah. And you'll be able to ask a couple follow-up questions. Yeah. Easy. It's easy. Lemon squeeze. There you go. Uh, how big did your chapter want to grow? Um, we want to be the biggest and the bestest group. Um, we're looking right now for um, a handyman, an electrician. We're looking for a wedding planner, a CPA. Like, gosh, if there's a CPA on this video right now, please join our group <laughs> on Monday. We have so many referrals for a CPA, but they're all so busy that yes. they can't get their butts in the seat. Yep. And that's what we need. It's um, difficult for that yes. chair. Yeah. And um, we just took an application, um, took two applications today for an at-home tutoring service, as well as um, uh, home security. Oh, very nice. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. We also need a pest control hmm. company. I've if heard they're you know very good anyone. to have. I've heard of a couple. Yes. Let me get with my people on that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyways, Brianna's chapter is uh, Triangle's Best. It meets Monday mornings at 8.30 at Family Legacy Solutions. Yes. If you go to trianglebni.com, uh, there's a drop-down box that says Find a Chapter. Click on that, and you'll be able to look for the day, the day part, the part of the triangle location-wise where you live that makes it easier for you time of day. Uh, we're more, you obviously we're both morning people. We enjoy that. My chapter meets at seven 30 and I couldn't be happier because I'm out by nine, nine 15, but also you can click on a chapter and it'll give you the list of all the people in there. So you can make sure that they are good referral partners for you. So when you go busy, you'll have an idea who's in there. And again, we recommend that you talk to Steve or Mary or Brenda in the BNI office, uh, four, six, five, one, six, six, seven. Triangle BNI at yahoo.com. They will answer any and all questions for you. Wonderful people. BNI. I think each week you see great stories of uh, seasoned veterans and new people like Brianna. And next week we've got Josh Oliver with Marin's Moving. Uh, same type of story. Successful as use BNI to grow the business. And I'm sure you've seen their trucks driving around town with the cows on them oh, for Marin's I Moving. Love cows. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, but that's what we like to bring you each week. And so we will see you next week with Josh Oliver and Marin's Moving. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast Software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.